Mr. Tosserra. I work in the mobile product management team in the supply side of uh, the things specifically. And today we are going to talk about uh, two important innovations that got recently released uh, by IAB. Uh, these are Celeste.json and Supply Chain Object. Now, uh, these two specs are completing or trying to complete a major effort that uh, you know started uh, two years ago from IAB uh, with ads.txt, uh, which is you know combating as much as possible the uh, fraud. Uh, now, uh, if you really think about ads.txt, what ads.txt was trying to do, uh, and uh, when I talk about ads.txt, I want to you know, put it in context with apps, so app ads.txt, which was released at the beginning of this year, 2019. Uh, so when you think about app ads.txt, what uh, it was trying to solve for was basically uh, bundle spoofing, uh, along with uh, you know, detecting any unauthorized resold inventory. Uh, what ads.txt was not really solving for was, uh, you know, providing a, a view from a buyer standpoint into the actual ad opportunity. Uh, so that's where these new two specs are, are coming uh, to place. And uh, uh, let's look at their template. So if uh, we start with Celeste.json, Celeste.json can be uh, can be actually seen as a you know counterpart of uh, uh, as.txt, uh, but for the SSPs. Actually, I don't really want to tri trivialize this spec as a counterpart of as.txt because uh, you know the primary goal is slightly different. So uh, both Celeste.json and supply chain uh, purely look at uh, the money flow, right? Uh, so while as.txt is more about account ownership. Uh, in the in the SSP platform, uh, when it comes to as, uh, when it comes to Celeste.json and supply chain, we uh, purely refer to the money flow. So uh, these two tools are given to the buy side uh, simply to understand where the money is going to. Now let's look at the pattern. Uh, Celeste.json has a couple of fields. Uh, the most important ones being on, on top. Uh, so we have the seller type. So seller type here can be of three types. Uh, you can have publisher, which is you know direct, and in this case, you know Imobi as an SSP is, by, is paying directly the publisher. Then you can have uh, you know uh, the uh, intermediary uh, type of uh, uh, of partnership in which uh, we are paying uh, someone else uh, on the behalf of the publisher, uh, which means it's not a direct payment to the publisher. And then you can have a use case in which both uh, publisher intermediary use cases are possible. Uh, now, the second field is seller ID. This ID is the same ID that uh, either the SSP should be providing to the publisher in terms of ads.txt. So, uh, DSP should uh, you know, uh, try to look up for the same ID uh, when it comes to both sellers.json and uh, ads.txt, uh, so pub ID specifically. Uh, and uh, uh, this, by the way, also the same ID uh, that is present in the pub object of the OpenRTB uh, request to the DSPs. Uh, now, the other important field is name and domain, where name is uh, simply the name of the seller and the domain is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's domain. Uh, we also have two additional fields, which are, uh, you know, is confidential. Uh, for some, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would say minor use cases nowadays, it used to be more common in the past, but now it's uh, uh, slightly less common. Uh, so in some cases, publishers don't want to disclose their partnership with the SSP. So in this case, the SSP is given a flexibility. We decided as an IEB community to give a flexibility uh, to the publisher, uh, to the SSP actually, not to declare what the publisher behind this seller ID and seller type is. Now, uh, and this is more like Sergio giving a tip to uh, DSPs. If you if you are working with an SSP that have a couple of uh, uh, you know occurrences in which uh, uh, is confidential is one, so uh, in which they don't want to disclose the the actual entity, this is understandable. But if uh, all of uh, their publisher portfolio is, is tagged as is confidential, well, I would doubt. I will, I will question the health of that business. Uh, now, the, the last field is, is pass-through. Uh, this mostly applies to um, use cases in which uh, the, the seller is acting as a facilitator. So, for instance, uh, Google AB or uh, Amazon TAM. Uh, now, let's look at the second important innovation, which is a uh, supply chain object. Supply chain, supply chain object is, is meant to be uh, a part of the OpenRTB request. So just to summarize again, uh, appads.txt, uh, if you remember from the previous video, is supposed to be in the, in the publisher root domain, uh, while uh, uh, sellers.json is supposed to be in the SSP root domain. Uh, so these are two external files that are hosted uh, by these two stakeholders. Now, supply chain object is an object that is a part of the OpenRTB request. Uh, so the great thing of this object is that it gives final uh, view, again from a buying standpoint, of where your money is going 
and uh, you know all the hopes, all the hopes that were behind that specific ad opportunity. Uh, so if you look at the scheme uh, of the supply chain object, uh, uh, you will have you know a couple of uh, important fields, and uh, these are you know the first one is uh, uh, ASI, which is uh, practically the the domain uh, of uh, the the SSP of or the seller. Uh, then you have the SID, which is the ID that SSP is giving to that specific seller, and again, this has to match with uh, publisher ID and the seller ID of sellers.json. Uh, and then you have the request ID, and uh, these two addition, the request ID, which is by the way generated by uh, uh, by the seller. And then you have two additional uh, fields, which are kind of redundant uh, when you support uh, sellers.json as well. Uh, reason being that. Uh, uh, you know, supply, uh, supply chain object and sellers.json should go hand in hand. Uh, meaning that whenever you have this uh, SID uh, in, the, in the supply chain object, the DSP can simply look up the SID to the sellers.json file. And this allows also to a lighter pay, payload, meaning the request itself will be lighter because now, uh, you know, all the, all the uh, players in the chain don't have to uh, add name and domain uh, into their node. So the, the, this is the wall object. Now, uh, this specific section it, uh, it can be seen as a, as a node of the object. So each uh, stakeholder that is taking a, you know, a cut in the, in the uh, journey of this ad opportunity is supposed to inherit this, uh, this supply chain object from upstream and uh, to append its own node. Uh, so I think the primary value of uh, this object uh, comes when uh, the SSP doesn't have a direct integration with the publisher because in case there is a direct integration with the publisher, well, uh, you know, the SSP can just create the supply chain object uh, uh, on its own uh, and uh, the DSP is not given any additional visibility. But now suppose you have a use case in which uh, Immobi is, for instance, getting a supply from another aggregator, which we can define aggregator 1, 2, 3. So if uh, uh, I'm passing as a mob in the ad request, publisher ID as you know aggregator uh, uh, aggregator one two three, uh, basically the DSP doesn't get to know whether that aggregator is getting the request directly from the publisher or from another aggregator. So as you can understand, this becomes uh, fairly difficult from a demand side to understand you know where where their their money is going to. Um, so that's a great spec. Again, most of the value comes uh, when it comes to resolve supply, and uh, I will uh, I will I will also say that you know these two uh, specs together, along with apparts.txt, put the, the wall uh, programmatic advertising in a much better shape. So of course our uh, you know message from an, uh, as an SSP is to adopt this spec as soon as possible, uh, and uh, this is a message to our peers obviously. And from a, a demand side, I would uh, highly recommend pushing. Uh, your SSPs towards the adoption of these two specs. Now, when it comes to Immobi, uh, we did roll uh, support to uh, Sellers.json uh, as of uh, October 9th. Uh, and we are working towards, uh, so th this file is fully accessible uh, in, uh, in our uh, root domain. So immobi.com uh, slash sellers.json, please go and visit. And then uh, supply chain object is uh, definitely in our roadmap. We are uh, on track to release it by the end of November slash the end of the quarter. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. Hi, and welcome to a new version of uh, White Ball Wednesday. Today, we are going to talk about a uh, new uh, innovation for uh, the advertising ecosystem and more specifically for the in app world. Uh, so, this is the extension of ads.txt. And uh, um, before digging a little bit more into what ads.txt for in app looks like, let's try to assess what ads.txt was trying to solve in the ecosystem itself. So ads.txt is uh, basically a file that gets uploaded into the uh, website of the publisher, uh, which is the property that publisher is trying to monetize against. And uh, the file um, is supposed to uh, basically look exactly like uh, um, a ledger in which the uh, publisher can list down the authorized sellers for that specific inventory. So uh, let's look a little bit more into uh, how the, the template and the schema will look like. So basically, you have uh, a domain, a publisher ID per the advertising platform, and uh, relationship type and certification authority. Now, in the case of Immobi, being an, an SSP for uh, that particular uh, property, it will be immobi.com, uh, 1234, or whatever uh, uh, publisher ID that we give to the publisher, 
and then uh, the relationship type might be either direct or reseller, uh, and then the certification authority, which happens to be uh, tag ID. I think one important uh, thing to note is that uh, once uh, uh, the IAB released as .txt in 2017, publisher of course started to integrate and uh, you know build to this pack massively. And uh, the great thing is that towards 2018 we could observe a decrease in fraud uh, of 10% uh, and plus for the cases of uh, uh, domain spoofing. So as .txt was trying uh, particularly to solve for uh, um, domain spoofing uh, and let's let's try to understand what domain spoofing is so in this specific case you have a, a, a site uh, which is xyz.com that is sending its request to an ssp so this is a very legitimate use case and the ssp will be as such sending the request to the dsp which in turn might decide to bid against that specific uh, property uh, but let's assume now a fraudster is uh, uh, trying to set up a fake site which is abc.com but in the request to the SSP, is sending still the same, uh, the same site, which is xyz.com. Uh, now, the DSP will not know that actually this, uh, the, the ad that is trying to serve will be served in another property. And uh, consequently, this is a lose-lose situation because if you think about it, the publisher, the real publisher, which in this case is xyz.com, is not monetizing against the budget that the DSP was meant to allocate against its property. And on the other end, uh, the DSP on the demand side uh, is uh, wasting its budget because it's serving an ad which is probably not in a brand safe environment and at the same time will not lead to any good performance. Uh, so uh, this is a massive innovation. This was a massive innovation for the whole ecosystem, but the problem with the app was that uh, for, a, for a web property, like in this case, uh, you are just supposed to append as .txt uh, to, the, to, the, to the domain but uh, or, or subdomain but in the case of uh, uh, in the case of uh, app uh, an app by definition doesn't live online it's uh, basically in the device uh, so you can just append add .txt uh, into into uh, its name uh, but uh, its name but you rather need to uh, you know find a way to retrieve a url first so there was a need for standardization and uh, that's where Imobi, along with the uh, IAB community uh, sat and decided to face uh, uh, this problem by issuing a spec that was released in on beta in uh, uh, 2018, in November 2018, and uh, uh, this is basically a guidance uh, that applies to both the publisher and uh, the app store. So the need from a publisher in this case is just to go on its uh, 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 on its app store page in which the the apps that he wants to monetize on uh, are hosted, and over there he's supposed to uh, update the uh, seller URL or developer URL field. And uh, from that, this will be basically the online resource uh, from which uh, eventually the ads.txt file, uh, which for up again is app ads.txt, uh, will be found. Uh, the second step that the publisher needs to do is uh, to go practically to that site that again he owns and uh, upload uh, the app ads.txt uh, file accordingly. Now, uh, from here onwards, uh, the same guidance as uh, you know uh, the, the 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 desktop or or, or web. Uh, as the txt uh, will apply. So it's exactly the same guidance uh, with some nuances on the uh, subdomain directive, for instance, not being uh, supported anymore. Uh, but I, I really, uh, I would really invite uh, everybody to just go on the IAB repository and, uh, you know, take a look uh, more granularly at both as the txt and the app as the txt uh, guidance. Uh, now, uh, on the other end, uh, for the stores, uh, there is another thing. So obviously, IAB, it's important to note that cannot really uh, enforce standards. So IAB tries to give guidance and then it's up to the stores to, of course, pick up and build to support this. Uh, so uh, what the IAB community tried to, to release was a document in which, uh, uh, you know, uh, they will describe IAB will describe how to uh, basically uh, retrieve the same uh, URL for finding the app, app at the .txt. So uh, this happens through three new meta tags that the App Store is supposed to support within the head tag uh, of the HTML page of the bundles. And these three new meta tags are App Store Developer URL, App Store Bundle ID, and App Store Store ID. Now, the flow will be as follows. Once this is, this is deployed by the, by the App Store, uh, the DSP is supposed to visit the uh, to visit the page of uh, the store where the store is, uh, of of the store where the bundle is 
and from here it will check for the bundle it's looking for. So uh, if the lookup is correct, then it will just retrieve, uh, retrieve the developer URL, and from here uh, it will just uh, cache the app adds.txt file, and at the runtime, whenever it gets the request, uh, whenever the DSP gets the request, it will just um, it will just verify that for that specific vendor uh, there is a, a name tree uh, for Imobi or for any other SSP. Um, so this is as simple as this, but obviously um, even if uh, this is a, a, a smaller effort uh, in terms of implementation, it, this might change the whole stack of an app store. So uh, obviously not everybody will be uh, you know building to this, but this is not a friction because actually uh, if the store has an has a build to support this, uh, the implementers should just try to uh, look at any other uh, way to a uh, methodology to retrieve uh, that seller uh, URL. Uh, field, which could be through an, an API that they might expose or by just passing the HTML uh, page of the bundle. Uh, now, um, I think this is uh, uh, a big innovation. Of, of course, Imobi is a huge uh, supporter of this, uh, so we really recommend if you are a publisher uh, to uh, you know go and, uh, and take the steps that we just described. And uh, should you have any question, reach out to Imobi and uh, please go and check out the IEB repositories for ads.txt and app ads.txt.